Hello, welcome back. Another video from Church House Classics. In this one, I'm going to do a little walk around on my dad's Range Rover. Um, I've never done one. I don't know why. Anyway, it needs some work doing to it. Um, and I thought I'd give you a little bit of an introduction to this car, let you know what it is, where it's come from, um, and what needs doing to it. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, subscribe. Helps me, helps the channel. Gives me a little bit of a boost, you know, to know that people like this kind of crap. Um, if you want to give me a thumbs up, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Thumbs down. Can't please all the people all the time. Comments below. I do read all the comments. I do try and uh, respond to every comment where I possibly can. If you want to contact me, Church House Classics, or one word, at gmail.com, um, and I'll do my best to respond to you. Um, I kind of like, you know, because I get so many emails, I do kind of limit the amount of time I spend on my computer, otherwise I can spend half a day every day. Um, so I sort of, you know, it might be a couple of days before I get back to you, but I will get back to you. Um, I've also got a website, Church House Classics, or one word, uh, .co.uk. Uh, and on there's a contact me page as well, which you can use. Make sure you put your email address on it, though, if you want to contact me, because otherwise it might not come through. And if you fancy supporting the channel for any way, you know, I'm being put off here with the Swifts in the barn now. Let me go around this way. And you'll see the Swifts flying in and out. We've got Swifts in the barn. If you fancy uh, supporting the channel or buy me a pint, thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate it. There's no obligation, but I do appreciate people who do support the channel. Um, all the money goes it back into the channel. It doesn't go into my pocket. Some of it goes into beer, but only really where it's specifically detailed as have a beer on me, Richard. And I most certainly will. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it's um, there's a PayPal me link in the description below. I got I lost my track then, didn't I? There's a PayPal me link in the description below, um, and you can you can donate funds to the funds to the channel. And I appreciate every single person that has done and will do. And I thank every one of you personally. Enjoy the video. Right, so my dad's car. This car was registered, first registered in May 1972. Um, Dad bought it a fair few years ago now, probably about four or five years ago, and it had been restored uh, prior, some years prior to him buying it. Um, we bought it from a dealer um, in Belgium, in Altair. Apologies for any Belgians that are listening to this, and I've just said it wrong just outside uh, Brussels um, and it was advertised in one of the glossy cl classic car magazines and my dad saw it and phoned up the dealer and said look you know what you know tell me about the car and the, and the dealer like more or less was, it wasn't blunt but was like you know if you're interested in the car come to Belgium have a look at it because I think he was getting plagued with people phoning up saying what's your best price mate and he just got bored with it so all really dad and I did, because dad had this great idea, so let's go and have a look at this car in Belgium. So right, okay dad, we can take the Eurostar, fantastic. Um, and uh, so all really that, that we had to do was we booked all the tickets up in advance and, and dad just got in touch with the dealer that morning, or the, the last thing the night before, because I think we left at about six in the morning, and just said, he haven't sold it yet, have you? He said, no, no, no. And he wasn't going to hold it for us because I suspect he's probably had time wasters before. And I know what they're like, time wasters are a pain in the ass. But anyway, we took the Eurostar over, we changed on to the Belgian line, went out to Alta, um, and uh, yeah, they, they picked us up, the, the, the dealer picked us up uh, from the station, took us back to the location where the car was, and you know, within seconds of looking at it, I thought, this is a sweet one. Um, obviously it's had a few winters outside, a fair few Devon winters, um, but overall, um, it's... I've done nothing to this car since we first bought it, which is why I thought, well, we need to do a bit of work on this. Um, but overall, um, it is a very original, kind of nice, tidy car. It's not had that much welding done on it. So when we're looking around it, it's a bit of a butte, actually. It's, it's been painted. But other than that, it's very, very, very original. It's had a patch on down here. Little bits like that have been done. Nothing particularly serious. But overall, the structure on this thing is really very, very strong. 
and I think that apart from a paint job on the outside it is pretty much as it left load lane now the history behind this thing it came from well originally it was registered in Cardiff as I'm led to believe someone out there will look at that number plate and say yeah that's a Cardiff number plate um, it lived there for a number of years and then it was exported um, and it was exported initially to uh, the Netherlands uh, where it was restored um, and it was restored using parts from you Range Rover kind of chappies will recognize tailgate up these things are fiendishly heavy there we are. I know those guys are based in uh, in the Netherlands so I've used those for parts in the past but uh, yeah it was restored using parts from those guys some of the bits like that they're a bit kind of khaki I don't know if that came from those guys or not but I, I think that's just a sticker rather than it is embossed but it doesn't seem to be original and the letters rather than being drilled and pushed on they've been they've had the the pegs cut off and then they've been glued on so silly little things like that but overall the car's in really really kind of good original shape original headlining newer seats it's got all of the original features to it dash is unmolested The, it did have a four wheel, uh, four spoke wheel on it when we first got it, but silly things like it's got slightly later gear knob on it, slightly later, not a huge amount later, but it's got all the correct features down here though, um, and it works beautifully. Except like this gear stick isn't coming out at the moment. What are we doing? I'm messing around there. There we are. The Eiffel Tower was struggling to come out of gear. Um, a massive amount of blanks on the dashboard, pretty much as it would have left the factory. Nice car though. Very nice. Stickers on the screen. I'm not sure whether the screen is a triplex or not, or whether it's been replaced at some point. Anyway, we're starting to dig down too deep into detail now. Um, it's possible the doors weren't original to the car. These trims need replacing. That's one of the jobs I will get done. Um, but it's got the early style trims that everyone objected to so violently on Allen, the 1972 car. These holes have been drilled here for door mirrors and they were taken off um, engine wise yeah bog standard original engine uh, original to the car I'm led to believe uh, had power steering whether it had it from you or not I don't know I'd have to dig out the heritage certificate to find out but they don't Land Rover was shite at keeping records so they may not have kept that um, I will um, have a look under the headlining to see when I, when I get the you know, do, do some work on this I'll have a look under the headlining because sometimes the build sheet can be found underneath the front headliner stuck to the inside of the roof um, and that would have things like power steering and so forth on it but anyway it's got power steering on it now um, correct engine blah 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 you will notice this, there's been some enhancements to it and that's because of the second overseas owner who was a doctor from Luxembourg great classic car enthusiast um, now the car was in a lot better shape <laughs> a lot tidier when he owned it um, but basically as I'm led to believe in Luxembourg getting one of these things road legal is a pain in the bollocks because they've got such stringent rules around the MOT and they need to make sure that the car is um, as clean as a brand spanking new car else it ain't gonna pass and I think the doctor got fed up with this just bureaucracy and he just sold his entire collection. And we, we, we ended up buying the Range Rover. Which is very nice, isn't it? Apart from it's a bit scruffy, he needs a damn good clean under here. Now, because of all this shit with the Luxembourg MOT and so forth, um, I think that the Luxembourg, MO, the Luxembourg owner fitted the car with LPG. And that's what all of this um, shenanigans is here. Uh, it's plumbed into the cooling system, blah de blah de blah. Um, there's quite a lot of it going on. The gas pipes, everything's got to be quadruple tie wrapped in. You can see that you know, kind of the attention to detail here. Um, so it's got quite a lot of stuff fitted in and around it, uh, which I'm going to be taking off. Um, and the reason I'm taking the LPG off it is Dad lives in North Devon. The nearest LPG station is in Barnstable, which is what about 15 miles away. Um, and it's not particularly cheap either and I think if I get this thing running nicely on petrol for the three or four thousand miles a year he does in this car um, he will be able to do it on petrol 
and it's not going to be a problem. Um, on, a, on a good run, these these um, Range Rovers, they'll they'll do 19, maybe 20 to the gallon if you're very careful. Round town, 12. It's got a series Land Rover over it that does 12, 13 miles to the gallon. I mean, for the, for the limited mileage we're doing, we'll take the complexity of the LPG out of it. Now, I know I run my daily driver on LPG. L95 runs on um, LPG. But I do like 14,000 miles a year in that. And it starts getting a bit pricey. This, if this thing does 2,000 miles in a year, it's amazing. It's lucky. Anyway, so that's that's one of the jobs I need to do, is I need to remove the LPG setup. The second job I need to do is this thing is as flat as a witch's tit at the moment. It really is not running very nicely, and I suspect it's the carburetors. Um, so I'm going to look at those. Uh, whether they need a complete refurb or not, I don't know. But what I'll probably do is end up spraying some TFR around this engine bay and actually getting it pressure washed off to clean some of the uh, kind of Devon salt and, and, and crap out of the way. So get all that out of the way. Um, we have got twin electric fans in here, which I shall leave in place. Um, at some point, we could probably paint the frame and the housing and so forth. I don't know what these have come from. They look a bit smart though, don't they? It's nice housing that those two fans are in. I'll check they're working. We don't generally have um, running problems. There's a little thermostat down here for the electric fans. Um, but uh, the temperature gauge doesn't work on this thing. I'll go over that. So the carbs, check the electric fans work, remove all the LPG shit, just give the engine a quick going over, make sure everything's tuned up nicely on it, make sure the ignition time is correct on it. We had a problem with the distributor a couple of years ago on this, um, but it was down to the, um, the shite cap that was on it. Now, I was, the other thing I was looking at on this, I got slight surface corrosion coming through up here. I just need to clean this whole thing back. And it, it, the, the whole carbon's painting, really. Uh, before it gets painted, I can sort these kind of trim holes out on the top here. Dad does like the door mirrors, um, but the door mirror on the driver's door is, is a mess. I'll go over that in a second. Passenger door, we can see the telltale up here of the hinge is worn, all the doors not shimmering correctly. So when I open the door, you can see that the frame drops clouts the b-post because the hinge is fucked so i'm going to need to fix one of the hinges on the door here which to be honest will involve the door being stripped down i'll need to take the door frame out of it um, and get the hinge replaced um, depending on how <laughs> compliant the screws are for the hinge depends on whether i have to take the wings off or not or the wing off it's not a huge issue to get the wing off we've already put carpet on the interior um, and I put a dynamat in here as well, but kind of it went, we went a bit berserk on it, really. You only really need dynamat in uh, in around the footwells and over the transmission tunnel. Carpet needs fitting better, though. It was a bit of a rush job. Dad was off on his way out. I had to kind of rush putting the carpet in. Not my best job. I'll remedy that. It's got later seats in it. They're two-door seats, but I think they're out of a late 70s, very early 80s car. Um, he's actually quite keen on getting the uh, Kit Kat seats in this, so using the nationwide trim parts. Um, I've got this complete set of seats. I probably won't end up refurbing these because these are actually in quite nice condition and someone that's got a late 1970s car might want these seats. Just I'll, I'll talk to uh, Trevor at Nationwide and get him to confirm the age of these things. But it's nice having the ET kind of headrest bits on them and also on the back seat as well looks nice um as far as everything else in this is concerned i've not found a spot of rust on the structure anywhere it's clean all over the chassis never been welded it's all in really really good shape we've got speakers on the bottom door panels dad never uses the radio in this thing uh, i'm inclined when i replace these door trim panels again nationwide trim but other supplies to them i shall replace the door panels with new clips get rid of the speakers get rid of the speaker wiring just tidy the car up get it looking really smart okay um so this door here you can see when i close the door you can see how far off that is i mean it's not great it closes closes nicely but it's off this um rubber around the rear window is in acceptable condition apart from this bottom edge down here and i've got a bodge a workaround that replaces that bit and it looks like someone's already been here and done something very similar but it just needs tidying up i'm going to get rid of this bead around here because it shouldn't be there it looks horrible so 
I'll take the rear trim panels off because they can be painted on the deck anyway. Probably not go, going to go as far as taking the roof panel off because that's just silly, pointless. Um, we went through and had the bumpers powder coated and I think I'm, I'm not a big fan of powder coating anymore because when it chips it just goes rusty and it starts to blow so I've gone off powder coating it was a good idea at the time I'm sure top tailgate is steel which is nice especially as it's not rotted through hasn't got the rubber on it though so I need to fit that you can see here where the water's been standing. The car needs to be undercover really more often than not. There's a small dent here that needs fixing. It looks like someone's been really quite brutal pushing the door closed. When you close tailgates, close them from one corner or the other, yeah? Works every time. You can see it's been to Le Mans. It lives on near Exmoor. Um, I need to remove this rear wing to get that panel off so I can treat the rust um, and get it all sourced out and painted. Again, this kind of seal that goes down between the panels, I want to get rid of all this shit. It shouldn't be there. I don't like it. Um, it you, you just can't see what's going on. But otherwise, I've got a better seat back as well. So the idea is really just to, to tidy this thing up, make it look nice. Again, because it was beautiful when we first bought it, and then I've done the square root of absolutely nothing with it since. We've got 19.9 on the clock. Um, I'll probably need to double check it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to have done 120,000 miles or thereabouts. Fucking huge hole in the top of the dash here for a switch. Um, but I have an, a, a, a possible fix for that. And that comes in the form of, I might, I'm going to put an overdrive on this. So I've got a couple of overdrive units. I'm going to put an overdrive unit on this and I'm going to put the overdrive badge over that hole. Uh, there are companies out there that could potentially repair the dash top but that then means the whole dash top needs to come out i know it's not a huge job but you know i'm just trying to limit how much of my dad's money i'm spending here um i think that's pretty much about it as far as work that needs doing and again closes nicely door shut lines uh, they're not bad actually for someone that wasn't me that did them door actually sits in that that hole there quite neatly you see the, the shut lines at the front and the back the, the the swage line as it runs or the scallop as it runs down there isn't bad if it was me i'd have this bulkhead raised up just by just by a washer because you can see here looking at the, the, the deck panel the deck panel's a little bit too low at the top and a little bit too low at the bottom so it just needs another washer putting in this gap here just to lift that deck up just by a millimeter or two and it would make all the difference to the side profile of that car the other thing I need to do is this bonnet's going to need some work. So the bonnet's going to need to come off. I need to take all this back here and find out what's going on. Um, all of this lot down here, because these obviously Burma bright wings, has come from this edge along the bonnet. And that all needs taking back and treating properly. The sound deadening panel's disappeared. Gone somewhere along the line. It's got the anti-drum stuff on the inside here. That's all in good shape. No, it's not an aluminium bonnet. <laughs> that would make it really early. It looks like it came off a Bahama Gold car, but this car's white. This car's always been Dav Davos white, or Davos white, or however you want to pronounce it. It's always been Davos white. Um, down here in the engine bay, we can see one of the power steering pipes is leaking. Um, so what I'm inclined to do here is actually replace the lot. Um, we don't know how old these power steering pipes are. They've got their original tags on them. I suspect that they are probably getting on for 50 years old. So they really kind of need, need need sorting out. The inner wings have been replaced on this, I can tell, because they've got the, the cut out there. So it's had new inner wings on it, but that's not unsurprising. That would have all been done as part of the restoration. It's got the correct washer bottle. Just wants a damn good cleanup, really. It's not done bad though considering i have not touched this car i think the only thing i've done on this car the only job i've done on this car has been fit the carpet which i didn't do particularly well and then the back back box fell off here so i, I have one in the store i think that the, the stainless pipe that came off um alan when i first got it and so i fit that on i'll tell you what considering i haven't touched this thing and it's just had routine servicing oil changes and so forth down the garage 
Um, it's lasted quite well, really. There's me. Right, let's get it into the into the barn in here. Right, bought it up. You need one of these. You need an empty one of these, really. I've got an empty one. Yes, I've got an empty one. Okay, that'll do. That will do. Um, that's even better, though. Except it's oily. Back it out. Can you be any less organised? Perfect. Right, bike comes up. I've already taken the aerial off. Bike's gone down. Back it. This body doesn't spring when you pull the um, bonnet catch, which I need to sort out. Right, bonnet up and up and up. That's the way to do it. I'm pretty sure there's swifts in the uh, in the barn now. But basically, what we're going to do, I think, is get all this LPG shite off. So let's get power disconnected first. There we go. Power off. Find out what on earth we've got going on in here. Um, That's not going to have helped it, is it? I'll tell you what else isn't going to have helped it. The fucking nuts missing off the top there. That's a worry. Luckily, it's on the uh, the non-airflow side, so it wouldn't have dropped into the carburetor. The carburetor is on, on this side, but there's no nut on that, and there should be. Right, so that's one of those. Uh, it'll be in here somewhere, I expect, or it's fallen out. It's fallen out onto the engine. This This kind of water trap thing on the back here is rotted out as well so yeah i think it's safe to say we're going to need a pair of air filters now carburetors now you might think why are you taking lpg off it because it won't be as clean will it can you even see me let's just have a quick check You could see me, but you can see me again now. So you might be thinking, why are you taking the LPG off this thing? Because that surely would make it run a little bit cleaner and greener. Well, I think like I said earlier on in the video, I've got a slight issue in that the car is kind of quite a long way from its nearest demo, sorry, nearest, nearest LPG station. The LPG isn't particularly cheap. The car doesn't really go on long journeys. And if it did, and it's barely going to do 500 miles on a motorway it's carrying around 100 kilos of lpg tank an unnecessary complication so i think from that perspective alone we kind of came to the conclusion my dad and i came to the conclusion do you know what let's lose the lpg let's sort the petrol system out get it running tuned up really nicely and get it looking smart under the engine bay leave the electric fans on it because i can't see any reason why i want to take them off um Right, here we go, under the dash. So just four, four or five screws just to slip it under. Right, okay. This is all the LPG wiring. The reason I couldn't pull it out is because it's been fucking cable tied. There's a world of other accessory wiring and so forth under here. Lots of these sort of things with bare wires hanging out of them, which I really don't like. Um, there's also the ubiquitous scotch block. Um, so that'll be coming off. Uh, so it's a good job I took this out really. Um, I'll see what Dad wants to do about radio. He might not want this. It's kind of, it's a bit wanky. It's a Barry Boy, Kenwood, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say Barry Boy. It's got a cassette on it. Uh, it might go in my great collection of things in the sky. The windscreen vent wasn't even attached. Up there. Look at that. They're all really improving things. And again, ties all over the bloody place. So I'm going to go through. This whole thing needs tidying up. I don't know what this one is here. There's a black wire with a bad crimp going to a red and a black wire here. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it goes to. I'm going to have to find out. So I'm going to crack on with that. 
uh, see if we can tidy up this accessory wiring under here and then pull the crap through the bulkhead which is all going to over there and I can see another zip tie over there there um, and uh, yeah let's get this thing going nicely there's another look at that one there's a brown wire there that comes off the brown feed going to a green wire so god knows I love it when people fuck around with cars I really do People that don't know what they're doing with car electrics, just fucking around with them. It's not good, is it? Right, let's get the LPG stuff out of the way first of all, then I can start to diagnose the rest of it. But, uh, you know, I thought you might find that amusing. It's always amusing when we find this kind of shit. Uh, it's not surprising. Not, I'm not, saying, not unsurprising, I should say. But it's already starting to look a bit better once... This is what I was saying. Once this is out of the way, that's out of the way. You're going to get a much tidier inner wing area. Uh, the relays down here, underneath the earth connection, those two, I believe, are electric fans. That's the little fuse box I was telling you about. I'll just tidy it all up. I've got no reason to want to lose these electric fans. I might paint them, but they're, they're looking all right. They look okay. If they work, they're staying. And then on this side of the engine bay over here, we've got... Some shonky looking fuel line goes to a cut off solenoid, which was part of the LPG, and then goes off into the carburetors. So, all that's going to come out as well. <sighs> and all this lot up here is the external amplifier, ignition amplifier for the 35DM8, I think it is. This one, I'll, when I pull it out, I'll have a look at it. But that's the, that's the least of my worries right now. Um, that's the original wiring down there for the ballast resistor. Look at the state of it. Ugh. Right. We'll get something done, don't you worry. We'll get something done. That's quite dodgy, actually, because one of those wires will be live when the ignition's on, and one of them will be live when the um, starter is turned. So it's not very well insulated, is it? And it's right above the fuel filter. Oh, we don't worry about shit like that. It will be improved, don't you worry. Right, tank's out. Tank is out. That was a piece of cake, actually. There's only two big straps to go over the top of it, as I expected. Nice big frame underneath it. Um, that's all the pipe work that goes towards the engine. That's the feed pipe there. I did the feed pipe first, because it faces towards the back of the vehicle. That fella there. And I thought, if there is any gas in this tank, then that's where it's going to come out from. Now, it might have a non-return valve in it. I don't know yet. But the tank is... As light as you like. There's no real weight to that. Compared to the toroidal tank that goes in there, I'll tell you what, that is light. Might have that for my car. Um, because the toroidal tank, it just, it just weighs like the moon. Um, now, we need to get the rest of this framework out of here. But what I'm probably going to do first of all is more fucking tie wraps. What I might do first of all is... Um, find the loom that goes underneath the car, just snip that so it's all out of the way, get all the vaporizer and shit out of the front of the car. What a dead nurse. Oh, I also found the starting handle, look. Tucked right down the back here, there's a starting handle. Look at that. That's all we're good to find, isn't there? No jack in here though. There's holes drilled through the floor, but we'll be able to fix those. We'll be able to resolve that situation as and when we get to him. So for now, I think I'm probably going to close the boot. I'll put this cover back over the top of the tank because I'm going to need that later on. And uh, this little cover just goes over the top and stops. Um, well, it's, it's supposed to have all kind of cups and things and zip ties and God knows what else on it. You need to be extra careful when it comes to LPG. That's why they, they kind of sent it in this country. But if you have a leak on your LPG tank, uh, you want to know about it before you light your cigarette. Um, there's a few videos online. They're probably amusing if you were that way orientated, but the, the, the videos online show what happens when you spark up your cigarette and your car's full of LPG gas, but you didn't know because it wasn't scented. Yes. They survive it, but I'm pretty sure they can be deaf for a short while, or even a long while, I don't know. Right, let's get these um, these bits off next, because these are now redundant. 
I'm just replacing the two heat hoses at the back of the engine here. Much more accessible on the carbureted engines than they are on the um, on the fuel injected engines. You haven't got all the plenum and everything in the way. Um, and uh, one of the other problems that Dad had last winter was that he couldn't get the diff lock engaged on this thing. And I've just found out why. And it's a bit of a bizarre one, this one. So I thought I'd video it for you. When you put a vacuum hose on a car, can you make sure it's a vacuum hose and not a bit of fucking airline from a fish tank? That is just so... I mean, honestly, the, the engine's going to suck. That just the, the whole pipe has collapsed. You can see it. It's like a, it's like a snake skin. Wrong pipe. So that's almost certainly why the, the um, diff lock wasn't locking, uh, wasn't engaging. That's pretty piss poor, actually. Um, you think of all the other attention to detail that's gone into this thing, uh, into this car, and all, all of the kind of like 55,000 zip ties where you could actually get away with two, probably. Um, and they go and put the wrong pipe on a vacuum line. Yes, okay, well, we can sort that out. That's not too much of a problem. The other thing I wanted to check was that the vacuum advance and the distributor was working, so I can check that a bit later on. But let me get these heater hoses on. Then I should be able to start the car up. I've routed the, um, the new fuel line. It's a bit of ethanol-friendly fuel line. As I'm led to believe, SAE J30R6 is ethanol-friendly petrol pipe. And that's what I've bought here. Don't buy this shit off eBay unless it's a trusted trader. Get this stuff from a reputable supplier. Um, I'd imagine that there is a great potential for people to fake this stuff. Um, because there's a lot of people buying ethanol-friendly stuff at the moment. But uh, I got this from a re you know, reasonable source. Just plugged it straight back on top of the filter. I need to replace the filter anyway. But let's get the thing running first of all. Okie dokie. Um, right. Coolant hoses are back on. Top the cooling system up. <laughs> Predictably, I forgot to change the bloody um, temperature sender, but I'll do that in a minute. Not really a problem. Can't remember which terminals the uh, the, the thermostat came off there for the uh, the fans, but not a problem for right now. It wouldn't start. Right. Why wouldn't it start? Well, there's no fuel. Uh, no fuel was coming up the fuel line whatsoever. We've got an electric pump on this car. And then I remembered this little bundle of joy down here which goes through a fuse, through a couple of crimps and so forth, and eventually ends up on the white ignition control circuit. So, shall we try it now? Ha! I don't think you can say fairer than that, can you? Uh, right, let's have a loop around. Right, okay, I can see initially the fan belt flapping around like a dick in a bucket down there, so we need to change the fan belt. These things run so quiet without the engine driven fan, don't they? They really do. I mean, that is just. There's a little bit of smoke coming off there because of coolant. Right, one thing I went, wanted to check here, and this is part of your Stromberg check. So let me just tilt the camera up a little bit so I can look. You can see the piston in here, in amongst the smoke. Where's the torch gone? So there you can see the piston, right? If I rev it, I want to see that piston go up. That one does. Does this one. Yes, yeah, so both pistons go up, which is good news because it means that both diaphragms are intact. So I think the thing just needs a damn good tune up. Certainly running sweet enough though, isn't it? What a cutie. It's happy. The car's happy because I've taken all that excess crap off it. Um, well, I think that'll do for now. What I'll do is I will do a separate video on tuning the Strombergs up on this particular car because it needs to go into my how to look after your Stromberg CD175, CD2175s um, and how to tune them up. Because honestly, I don't understand why people change them. But never mind. When they're working, they work beautifully. That's not running bad, is it? I think the throttle's just stuck. When well, I flipped it open just now, I don't think it's got back. Oh, the choke's open. Let's push the choke back in. Beginner's mistake. There you go. Choke's back in.
No, fucking sweetie. Right, I think I'm going to, probably next, I'm going to get this thing prepped up and give it a damn good clean. Because that's what it really what it needs. When it comes to the rubbish pile, this is somewhat alarming, I know. Look at this fucking pile. <laughs> Never mind. It happens. Okay, might as well do this while it's here. Um, so in order to test a temperature sender, really want to just establish whether it's the wiring or the loom that's at fault. So all I've done here is I've just attached a jump lead onto the wire that goes to the temperature sender, which is there, uh, and just dumped it to an earth. Uh, when I turn the ignition on, I'd expect the temperature gauge to max out. And if it does, then the problem is with the gauge. Sorry, if it does, then the problem's with the sender. If it doesn't, then the problem's with the gauge. Now, that's not maxed out, is it, at all? What's going on there, I wonder? The fuel gauge is working, so we know that's okay. So it's not likely to be the... Um, uh, what's his name? Let's attach the jump lead direct to a better earth than that one. Because it could well be that, that wasn't a good enough earth. Uh, where can I put it? That'll do it. We're connected on there, and we're connected up there. Let's try again. <laughs> could be a false negative or a false positive or whatever we're going to look at what, what a look at it there you go it's maxing out just dodgy earth okay so we know the wiring and the gauge is okay so it's going to be the sender more often than not okay that's the easiest way to check these things the temperature gauge doesn't work earth the wire right so this is all a bit warm now isn't it it's a bit silly i shouldn't have warmed it up but i did forget to do the sender now i'm gonna to have to go and find the bloody sender anyway which i ordered i don't know where it went to but uh, that's easy enough to fit and then i need to find another pair of these oh incidentally i found the nut that fell off that um it was actually on the inlet manifold on top of the inlet manifold so it had dropped out through the drain hole on the bottom of the air filter i don't honestly do not know why that pipe is not connected up to the engine breather that's weird maybe it's some dodge to get the um the emissions clean on this or clean enough on this car for some ropey old netherlands uh, not netherlands what are you talking about richard luxembourg uh, vehicle test anyway this is all the bits that have come off it big pile of bits and we'll go in my box of interesting things to look at later on Oh, that was a fair few miles out. Let's go for that one. You guys can stand there all day long watching me do up a plastic bung on the top of a radiator and call it quality. Sorry, guys, I'm rushing backwards and forwards. I'm going to have to edit all of that out because I know some people feel a bit awkward, travel sick when I start fucking around with these things. Right. I think now we've done that, I'm going to start working around the electricals in this engine bay. So um, I can test or get the fans up and running, check they work. Because um, in theory, if I connect those two terminals together, then I will be able to confirm, first of all, the electric circuit's okay. Then, of course, I'm going to need to test the, uh, the thermostatic switch, which is in there. We can do that. Um, 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 um. That wasn't bad. Bad for a couple of hours. Work. Two and a half hours, that. Right. Just want some fucking good cleaning here. I mean, it's already looking better without all the uh, you know, excess shite around the engine bay. And all it really needs now is a damn good clean. A bit of TFR, I think. Oh, the other thing I wanted to work out was whether that is live or not. It's a brown wire, but <laughs> who fucking knows? I've got no idea what it's for. It must have been part of the loom. Have I got eight? <laughs> this is the LPG loom. So yeah, I think it's part of that. 
I think it's an earth wire. I think brown is supposed to be earth for some fucking inexplicable reason. So we need to do a bit of colour coding, a bit of fixing around on some of the wiring in this engine bay because I'm not happy with having browns as earth and blacks as live and it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's all, all wrong. You're going to end up having a disaster on your hands. So white should be ignition controlled unfused. Black should be earth. Brown should be ign uh, non-ignition, so it's battery live. So as soon as the battery's connected, then brown would be live. Um, and then you've got all of the various different colours, which would then be a variety of fused and unfused. I mean, you can look up a Lucas wiring code. They're fairly straightforward. And they're, you know, <laughs> I guess you just get used to them. They're not difficult to work with. Uh, right, okay. Going to find some bits and bobs, I think. Mm -hmm.